Hey, Jared. What's up, Glenn? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah, right. There's always something going on with you. <laughs> uh, just waiting around. Waiting around. I got this uh, hint that tomorrow was supposed to be an important day, but I I have no knowledge of what's in store, so I just put the date on today. I see that's the strategy for a lot of things. You uh, It's almost like what's the end of the <laughs> You wait and things come to you. Well, they, they try to make me uh, cry wolf. Yeah. I don't fall for it. But at the same time, I have to be careful mm-hmm. and uh, not not just glance over things just in in case something is brewing. Like what you um you said uh what might happen in April, is it? March? Yeah, from February 23rd to April 14th. So like I could just I I could basically just uh expect a the 40 story tsunami. Anything is possible when you're in the window. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know what it is? I don't want to It's like damn, what a waste it would be, I think to um at least get this far, learn this much, and for it to, for everything to just be destroyed. I mean, I, I want to um, try to prevent it. We do what we can. Yeah. And uh, in the end, the uh, bad guys have their finger on the button, yeah. and creation can stop it. But by stopping it, it may stop much more than we would want. Yeah. Have you spoken to anybody? Anybody new? It was a, a, a woman who called about a week ago, left a message saying that she knew you. Yeah, she told me she tried calling you, but but I wasn't here, yeah. and uh, I don't have a budget to call people back. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not here. they got to try again. Yeah. So, yeah, right now I'm going through this book, uh, Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, and it's all about this guy's journey to the celestial city, Mount Zion. Yeah. And you know, it's it, they show you in there. You know, they have to go to outer space. That's the, that's the whole allegory I, I saw in there. Outer space. The celestial city. That's usually they're mirror imaged. What do you mean? So when they say "look up," you Look should down. be looking down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They always it's like a fake out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, I'm just um doing that. Um I've been um Dana was telling me how uh, you wanted to something about a conference call or something like that or well, I, you know, I told him when he asked me what he should do, I said, you know, whatever you decide to do, that's what you decide to do. I'm not here to basically tell anybody what to do. Mm-hmm. If you guys have a, a meeting and you need some questions answered and you think I can answer them, mm-hmm. then... Yeah, you can arrange a conference call. Oh. But the uh, the thing to remember is uh, 
the cell doesn't like me to make prearranged appointments for calls. Oh, why is that? Like, I thought like a meeting somewhere would be dangerous because you know. Well, it's it's basically because they believe somebody can start tracking that I'm at a certain place at a certain time. Oh. So it's not the the one call that's the problem. It's the repeat calls at the same time. If I was to do that, I wouldn't. I don't think I'd plan uh, with you. Uh, so uh, I would just it'd be random. I would just call. Yeah. Or, <laughs> that's the best thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's that they have to organize what they do at their end. Mm -hmm. If there's going to be something on a regular basis, then they have to have people out here watching. Mm -hmm. Plus, they have to have trackers on on the net and trackers on the phone and what have you to see how this is all being coordinated. Mm -hmm. I know who the culprits are. Bell, uh, tell us. Yeah. Yahoo. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard any cases like people that you talk to, if they're being like uh, monitored? <laughs> I think after? everybody is being monitored now. Yeah. Sometimes that, I that feel like only, <laughs> huh? only a matter of computers being uh -huh. large uh -huh. enough and capable enough. I'm thinking, no, computers, like, they just see your uh, daily activity on the net, but we're talking about, like, a van parked on your corner. You got, you got in the U.S. alone 16 agencies mm. that spy on people. Yeah. So, you know, add to that the telephone companies, the cable companies, the satellite dish companies, uh, anybody that has a, a device mm -hmm. is being monitored. Now, the, the extent of the monitoring depends on basically the profile built up over time. Mm -hmm. The uh, monitoring can be as simple as word recognition, down to voice recognition <clears throat> where <clears throat> no matter where the person is, <clears throat> see, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. his voice is recognized uh, as soon as he or she begins to speak. I so, think if you're getting a monitor, <laughs> that means you're doing a good job. <laughs> eh? Uh, if you're getting monitored, it means you're doing a good job. <laughs> You well, if right, you're right. if you're getting monitored, you know that that the people who are running the system mm -hmm. are are basically concerned about your activity. I mean, I can't go on the net and and do any regular business. And as I've told you, you know, the neighborhood has has had additional bell wires put in and. Mm. And antennas and whatever. So. so, like, even if you were to get like a brand new computer, doesn't you, matter. Oh, because they did something in like the actual. Like, they pre-plan it. Okay. Everything is already in the computer, and it's basically all hidden behind gates. Mm. And as they focus in on a person they'll open up the gate and some activity that has been pre-planned now starts to operate. That's basically what they do. Everything, they don't need to add things into the computer. Everything's built in by Apple and Microsoft and all of those people. Oh. Now, you you know, over time, you can learn how to lock the gate again. <laughs> and and when you lock the gate, that pisses them off because they have to come back and open it. You know? And you lock it again, and they open it. Good game. 
Yeah, the games. <laughs> Tag. Gates <laughs> plays. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, so, so, yeah, hopefully, Glenn, I could um get this. <laughs> it's like my time was just cut in half. Hopefully, I can get um over there. <laughs> Before the end of February, now yeah. is that what it's looking like? <laughs> oh, man, I, I'm I'm just listening. I I still believe that uh, you know the preferred date is November 11, 2011. But now that I've been talking about it, mm-hmm. that is subject to change. But you know, sometimes they want to show that, you know, they're smart and tough and <laughs> they can handle this and do it when they want, not mm-hmm. when you force them to type of thing. So. What do you think they meant, though, in, from that movie, 2010? Because 2001, 9-11 happened. Well, it, it, yeah. it would be a great uh, uh, thing to do mm-hmm. to get the masses prepared for the year after you're going to do something. Okay. But 2009-11 didn't happen like that. They so actually told you when it was going to happen. Okay. 2011 now mm-hmm. means that it may happen in 2010. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we know basically that uh, Olympics are, are a way they use to loot a basic area, and uh, I think they've got all the tickets that they want sold for the Olympics in Vancouver, um, and it wouldn't surprise me that something would happen uh, just before the closing ceremonies in, in Vancouver. You know the. Uh, Cascade Mountains aren't too far away. The uh, tsunamis that come off the ocean that they warn you in Oregon about uh, are always a possibility. They've had so much rain in that area for the last month or so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they'll have any snow for the Olympics. Still have a month to go, but the temperature has been in the eight nine degrees Fahrenheit. And certainly, snow doesn't hang around long at that temperature. Yeah, um, uh, a friend sent me a video. It was like some Christian uh, just talk uh, show, or whatever, with a guy was talking about like, end times and. It's so yeah, it was it was it was depressing listening to that guy because he was like yeah this just like there will be a new earth and a new heaven and it'll be like a big ball of fire type of thing like there he was like welcoming like his own destruction we will go with God yeah. his chosen people and I, I, <laughs> that stuff really like just it depresses me <laughs> watching this willing fools this. God is not even going on this trip. (laughs) The two computers are taking over if you let them. (laughs) God God is just uh, the top dog among the troglodytes there, the Moho bunch, and and, uh, they're not invited. They, They thought, you know, humans be destroyed and they would survive but what would a computer want to have a bunch of arrogant people who want to be adored along for the ride I thought the computer just followed orders and carried them out to perfection but I guess it's too perfect right? no. as, as as perfect as one can be by having knowledge, uh, computers can handle that task. 
they are also in a position to scientifically um, relaunch life on the planet. So how could you give something of, else up? Like I know these Neanderthals, they were power hungry and people who you know, crave power. They, they're usually scared of giving power. Yeah. How, how could they just give it all to a machine? Well. The, well None of them had the power. Each one had a piece of the power. Uh And they simply were linked up and their piece of the power downloaded. So the computers always are the ones that end up with the the assembled power. It's the principle of a critical mass. Yeah. It is the totality of the knowledge that gives the power, yeah. not not the individual knowledge on one particular topic. Yeah, the thing about knowledge is interesting is that um, it's like relative. It's always growing. It's never. That was stagnant. So was changing. Going to something else. Like one thing, one uh, one error we might find, think we know something about a topic, and then a thousand years later we'll find that there's actually more to it than that. But imagine if you had a computer a hundred thousand years ago, mm-hmm. and you kept putting into the computer everything you believe to be true. Mm -hmm. And the computer would match it up with all it knew. Mm -hmm. And it would say, okay, I can hang on to this piece, or no, that's garbage, throw that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, had six billion people working for the computer, gathering up information. Mm -hmm. And every time the Olympics came, it got an update on all the construction of a human body. How a thigh has to be built to make a high jump higher. How an arm can throw a spear further. All of that information gets put into the computer every four years. So, And then you got... Pulitzer Prizes and Nobel Prizes and mm-hmm. everything that's known gets put in because people turn it in mm-hmm. for a prize. They're looking for a gold medal or they're looking for a uh, a million dollar check from from Nobel. That's what people are they're almost like dogs in a sense. They just want that biscuit, that little pat on the back. You know, Not realizing <laughs> in the end that what they're doing is providing data leading to their own destruction. <laughs> like, oh, sometimes I gotta laugh at it, how, how stupid we'll, <laughs> people are. We all are. <laughs> <Get with. laughs> so, th- since we all have a piggy in the back, and that's linked to the computer, I mean. Everything like like information that we retrieve, it goes directly back to the computer. Right? Yeah. Wow. So it's gaining all like I guess the experiences and and. Uh... Well, obviously the the piggy in the neck is not perfect because yeah. they're they're working on a system where piggy will be monitored twenty four seven. Oh, they can't. So they have. It's not monitored for us. Right. At this stage of the game, it's not being monitored on a uh, minute-by-minute basis the way they plan to do it in the super slave they send out in space. At this stage of the game, it's only monitored to the extent that it basically makes people feel worse or feel better, depending on the decisions that they're making. Uh, how they react to the uh, 
the drugs they get from oh, that's what doctors the, and all of that stuff. So all those drugs, like psychiatry, yeah, and the whole medical profession, it's like they're actually linked to like the medulla to manipulate. Yeah. Plus all the images you see on TV that are are either seen by your eyes and put into your brain or heard by your ears and basically manufactured by your brain, then these things create fears or joys, whatever. Yeah, I noticed too... In the world, in just the media world, good movies like a lot of the movies they they have to put violence in them, and I'm thinking this is because they obviously you know bred killers and those types of people from you know I guess the previous DNA, and these movies and video games that have all this violence, it's just to probably like trigger something. It could certainly be a trigger if you have the recessive gene that responds to that stuff. Oh. But it's 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 more likely the violence thing is more likely to to get people to be immune oh. to to other people dying. Oh. So it doesn't have the same impact on on the person when they hear about somebody dying yeah. than it would uh, if they hadn't been basically uh, okay. made immune yeah. over time. And I think, too, because uh, it's like war, we're at war, yeah. so they want that type of people. Yeah. So, yeah, that's always the answer. Like, um, I'm, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, I guess there are people, like, in, you hear people in the media talking about it, like, oh, kids, violence and video games, but... But you see, it, it also works on both sides, mm-hmm. because if the, the controllers are losing a war, mm-hmm. they can get people to go against the winners of the war. Like, if your country was winning in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And they didn't want you to win in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. They could start a process of uh, counting the bodies of soldiers that died uh, in the way they did in Iraq to turn people off of being there. Mm -hmm. Uh, In Iraq, at the beginning, it was fine because you sent all the money. Mm-hmm. And once the money got there, they wanted you out. So mm-hmm. that's when you know, CNN started a body count on uh, Lou Dobbs' show every mm-hmm. night. Oh, Lou so Dobbs that. got like everybody. He got some people started up on the North American Union. He was the one that like, I guess was given the privilege of opening that story to the yeah. masses. And all the patriotic people, conspiracy people, they all... Patriot. Patriot. Think of it, it has the word riot. <laughs> and pa. Yeah, pa's riot. <laughs> and, and transmission. A, a pat on the back, or a tap backwards, so you open up the tap for or against something. Yeah. Using patriots, yeah, you, you know, I, have to start the riot. Yeah, as you, you know, when you uh, analyze, observe, and analyze, you start noticing like every little thing, like little sayings people say, like um, they have a <laughs> An ulterior to- motive. Yeah, like I'll say, like I hear people say, ah. I came from nothing. I came from the dirt, man. I came from nothing. I'm like, wow, we really, we really did come from the dirt. People, people say as an expression that they, you know, because they work hard. But That's because they're not allowed to say I came from shit. <laughs> <laughs> Some people say that too. I came from shit. <laughs> yeah, that that's basically where they came from. Copperlite, yeah. you know, fossilized shit, and, and 
uh, hey, it's part of the journey. Yeah. But they'll tell you, now it's time to go back. You know? mm -hmm. Live in a world that, that acts like a toilet. <laughs> so, uh, I'm looking to, uh, I look like in the Middle East, I look for like powerful figures in like the Middle East. I, like, I know it's like Saudi Arabia, they seem to have a lot of... Uh, Most of the people with the largest amount of power you never hear their names. Yeah. Okay. They they go under uh, monikers like Iminaus Gris. Basically means someone in the background that you never hear of who has the power to make things happen. As soon as people become public, their power is limited because there are too many people watching. Yeah. But when they're not public, they can act in a totally different way from the average. Oh, yeah, like like Donald Rumsfeld. He was out, you know, he was doing his thing. Then he, got, then he became popular. Yeah. Now you don't hear about him at all. <laughs> And quietly, mm -hmm. he nominated the current uh, Secretary of Defense who replaced him. And he did it in a sneaky fashion. He was then able to move out of the limelight and nominate his replacement and make it look like these two have no connection whatsoever. Oh, <laughs> uh, um, that's a uh, free and open society, right? Yeah. Have you spoke to uh, Tom lately? I haven't heard from him in a couple of weeks, I guess it is now. Two, two yeah. weeks, probably. Yeah. I, I don't think he'd be calling much if he's planning his return. Oh yeah. yeah. I think when I call you, man, <laughs> when I plan to come there, I don't know how I'll do it. I want to do it. With... Just don't mention my name at the border. <laughs> oh hell no! <laughs> I don't even know you anymore. But um, yeah, I'm just even yeah that man. Like those border people are funny. Like one minute they'll be all over you, and sometimes they'll, they won't even pay attention to who you are. Like a hit or miss type of thing. Hang on a second. There's a cat playing with my computer. He had off of that keyboard. He was typing a message in cat on the keyboard. Who do you think he was trying to uh, communicate well, with? I, I got to go to the other side to read the screen. Just hang on a second. Uh, Now they've brought up a little doggy on the screen. <laughs> doggy? Yeah, it says, uh, yeah. what do you want to search for? <laughs> Pictures, music, or video? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I have that. <laughs> and there's a little dog at the bottom. <laughs> Change your preference. 
I remember reading an, uh, an older article that you had. It was pretty interesting how you said it was somebody. I think Will, yeah, Will Hart, and um, yeah, I think it was Will Hart, but uh, it was basically like a journalist who found like there was a conspiracy of you know like mainstream scientists were uh, trying to like hide like because they they cause, you know they had artifacts that they dug up that proved that humanity was older than what the the main I don't even remember that, Jerk. Oh, you don't? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, because in, in, in it you said um, they said um, yeah, that was so long ago. <laughs> I don't expect you to remember. But um, in it they said that uh, like they found that there were Caucasian people live, uh, living uh, in Asia before they, before uh, the uh, the yellow agents they call them and um, I don't know anything about that. Oh, uh, it was. Um, it's always possible that uh, mm-hmm. Yahoo or somebody like that mm-hmm. went through my archives and changed things. Uh, but if you, if you find a date mm-hmm. or the article, let me know and I'll go back and and look. But I have, uh, I have no memory of that at all. Yeah, it was. Well, I thought it was an interesting article. See, I I've never had basic access to my archives. That's oh. been my problem on the net from the beginning because uh, I don't come into this with computer knowledge, and therefore there always was someone else handling that part of it, a uh, webmaster of one kind or another. And oh, so uh, you, you, you've never, like, been able to go on your own, or, like, review what you... No, no. I can, I can look at things if I know what I want to look for, but I certainly don't have the time to go back and read, you know, 10,000 different postings. Mm-hmm. And and if I do, and I see something that I don't recognize, I have no way of uh, of changing it or mm-hmm. deleting it or whatever. Right. Google had that power over me when my site was on Google. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it was in the hands of uh, uh, a couple of webmasters along the way. I only basically deal with today. I I post things, and then they're out of my hands. The system from from the military on down has much more power to go and change anything that I do. And that's, the, of course, the same for anybody that's not computer literate that doesn't handle the thing from beginning to end. Yeah. There, there are some people who, who can basically set up a website and control it from their own home without even going through um, anybody else's computer. Here... With Bell Canada setting up a a second computer and taking over possession of my name and address mm-hmm. and making me a a local outlet on their computer, I have no guarantees that I ever am the first one to see anything that is sent to me. I had a friend who had a program that um like. But you would have to like work with him. Like he would do this program where like you would let him into your computer and he could see everything that's going on in your computer. Well, that's it's... what webmasters do. Yeah. Every webmaster in the world mm-hmm. goes into your computer, and uh, they're not going into your computer by magic. They mm-hmm. have a formula mm-hmm. that all of them understand. So you know. Somebody at uh, 
one of the 16 spy agencies can basically do that with their hands tied behind their back, basically. They, they do it every day. So yeah, Canada. Um, so Canada is the second can in the, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> yeah, Canada has three cars in it. It's ka ka ka. Triple three and one ka ka. <laughs> yeah, because an N can be turned sideways, mm -hmm. so that gives you the second one ka. Na becomes ka, mm -hmm. and da. Because the letter is linked as the penultimate letter, you go back from the one that's there, so the D becomes a C, if you understand what I mean. That makes ka, ka, ka. So I don't know if there are uh, anybody in the world, if there is anybody in the world with ka, 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 ka. <laughs> Mm. But California mm -hmm. has uh, one car in it. Kabbalah has two cars in it. If there's two L's, I guess you couldn't. You can basically call that a C. If you put the two L's together, it makes a big U, and you turn it sideways. So. That may be three cars, but I, I suspect that there must be a fourth car someplace. Ka 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 ka. <laughs> Everything is based upon the net product at the end. The human has a net product at the end called shit. And in in the dictionary, they call it excrement. For humans, mm -hmm. that is the least valuable thing they they own. But for the controllers of our system, it says it's the mirror. It's the most valuable thing we own. So the most thing of value people see today is money. And yeah. For the system, that's the least. The least valuable. <laughs> As yeah. above, so below. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, it's very much in the sense of uh, uh, an insurance company mm -hmm. um, wants to acquire the infrastructure of a nation. And it does it by lending money to the government. But the people, they don't even think about owning the infrastructure. They just want to use it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's two groups approaching the problem, uh, one for the short term and one for the long run. And if you own the infrastructure, of a country, you own the country. Yeah. So insurance companies are basically the real power, and you never hear about them as power. But in, in fact, they are the Iminas Gris, the, the power behind the throne. Yeah. And that's why the police work for them and manufacture uh, false reports so that uh, uh, you'll sign a ticket to get out of the problem you're in, mm -hmm. but that's only the beginning. Oh, yeah, when people cop out in court. They cop out, yeah. That's what their system, you know, they know people do that. Cause, uh, most of the time, when people, when you get a ticket, you can beat it in court. If you want to take the time. But they know people just want to pay it and go get on with their The minute they pay for it, the that same. information is then used by the system mm -hmm. for things that you never could even imagine. Right. 
you learned this from your experience. Uh, All of the things I know, I've learned from my experience. I, I am told things that happen to other people, and most of the time, I don't believe it. Yeah. until such time as an experience in my own life mm-hmm. proves it to be correct. That's like with this information I've been learning. It's like, um, it's like, um, it's like, it's like when you learn something, people say, okay, you, you know, this is, you know, like I, with the stuff you're saying, a lot of people say, it's, no, it's not true. But for me, I, I, it's like I know it's true. It's not... um. Yeah, because you have it. You yeah. have it in your spine, and you've yeah. accessed it, and you feel it, and mm-hmm. it's intuitive. That's why, like, with me, it's it's intuitive with this stuff, but I guess um, it's not good enough for... Um, no, you got to bring the intuition into your reason. Yeah, yeah, I know. I do that, but, like, when you talk to other people, it's like something they have. And I know, like, with other people, I, I see, like, if I mention to them, it sounds kind of, it sounds crazy, but I just, I don't know, I have that feeling that um, all it is is just, it's the knowledge, very, it could be, it's inside them. It's just, they just don't know it. Well, there you know there are two types of people you will speak to. Mm-hmm. There are they are those people who don't know anything you're talking about, mm-hmm. and therefore for them it can't be true. Yeah. And then there are the other people who know what you're talking about is true, mm-hmm. but for one reason or another mm-hmm. they have to deny that it's true, and and that can be. You know, for the simple reason that once they accept it's true, Mm -hmm. then it moves on to the next step. They have a responsibility to do something, Mm -hmm. and they don't want the responsibility, so therefore they deny, deny, deny. Mm -hmm. Other people uh, want security, Mm -hmm. and they find that security in joining religion. And in order to be in religion, part of their duties is to accept a uh, information on faith alone. And therefore, no matter what you tell them, they won't change their mind because they've been programmed to believe without reason. Yeah. Then you you have the smaller group that's basically paid to tell you you're a liar. <laughs> there are some of those on the net. Oh yeah, I, I got one guy right. I'm looking at his email right now. Like I'll send him because he'll send me emails, and I will just respond like I'll send you a post or something. Right? And he'll just send. Look what he says right. Now. He goes. I have no affinity with evil now. Evil is death. Life is good. I love life. I love good. Being a mental, being in a mental institution is bad. Being sane is good. I hate evil and I love good. We are friends because we love good and despise evil. I don't have any power over plausibility, denial, deniable weapons. And what, he, what he believes is good <laughs> is, is equal to Instant gratification. <laughs> He's thinking in like a Zoroastrian like yeah. type if, of thing. If there's a problem, you mm-hmm. know, if he has to do some work yeah. in order to define something, he puts that in the category of evil. Yeah. Uh, it's it's the same thing if you think of a guy who walks into mm-hmm. physics class mm-hmm. and he doesn't understand it. So he walks out in the hallway and says, That's "All bad. physicists are stupid." Yeah. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's there's a task yeah. to admitting something is is possible. Yeah, it, that, it, that task falls upon you to do some searching. Yeah. 
and and the lazy people don't want to go through that process. Yeah, and so, this same person, right? They told he told me, he goes, he goes, wealth is good, poverty is evil, and he goes, he goes, uh, I am I am part of Jerusalem Freemasonry. Just the light is good, so it's, the light is good, darkness is bad. I'm just like, what? <laughs> Uh, these are the things that you know I see in people, you know, like like on a he, net, like he has pigeonholed, yeah, himself, everything. Yeah, it's sad. And another person I see on the internet too, like um, I know people who are into. I mean, I don't know him personally, but from what I see, uh, in in on the net, like I know one person, like there's like a group of, it's like a community out there that call themselves like witches and they're all into the you know like the old pagan religion you know and um I don't know like I'll try to explain to them you know hey these all all this religion you know all this even the paganism was all created by priests for you to believe in like what what's the what's the sense in worshipping you know nature and, yeah. I mean I, I don't see any sense in it but um you, you got to remember, Jerry, that there's no such thing as only black and white. Oh yeah, that's that's a that's a logic in a box you're putting yourself into by even yeah. thinking like that. Gray is is relative. Yeah, you know it it depends on the situation. Uh-huh. You know the uh, the Jewish people have this story about Anne Frank. And and uh, it brings to mind things during the war. And one would have to say, okay, lying is bad, mm-hmm. and that's black and white. Mm-hmm. But if someone came to your door dressed like a Nazi and had a gun in his hand and was looking for a little... Jewish girl that they wanted to kill, mm-hmm. and you had that little girl hidden in your attic or in your closet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, if telling the guy at the door is that you don't know where she is or that she's not at your place, mm-hmm. technically speaking, that's a lie. Does that mean it falls into the category of bad? Black is black, white is white? Or really what you're doing is is not for your personal benefit. As a matter of fact, it might put you in some danger by not telling the guy at the door the whole story because if he searches and finds the person you're in trouble. But that's always what has to be considered, uh, you know, in, in uh, when you're talking, is it for self-serving uh, reasons or is it the bigger picture? Yeah, that whole black and white thinking. Like, I don't know if you remember when Bush, George Bush Senior, when he says, he goes, "This is good and evil, right, right and wrong." <laughs> this guy talking to millions of people to, be, I don't know, believe in this type of thinking. But that's you know, that's how uh, I guess we're brought up. I think that way. That's religion. Yeah. Religion is pigeonholing. But they never see the religious people. They never, like all the religions, like they always see the other person as evil and their inner circle is good. Sit in a tavern yeah. and try to find somebody who will say, I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy. <laughs> Same thing as going to church. Yeah. You know? Sit yeah. in a church and try to find a person in church who says, this is spiritual, therefore it's got to be the same as spirits, mm-hmm. so I'll put it on a shelf with 
scotch, rye, beer, gin, and vodka. Yeah. It doesn't happen. Yeah. They, uh, they make up their own definition and, and they stick to it. And what they're looking for in the long run is instant gratification. Yeah, every, don't don't yeah. give me a problem. Don't cost me any money. Don't uh, make my life more difficult than it has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and you could replace all of that with me, myself, and I. Well, yeah, well, um, that's the whole us, you know, instant gratification. Like it's funny. Like when I see people. Like, like, and like people that I know who know me, and if I see them, it's like sometimes I feel like because I see them making mistakes that are so obvious, like you could just prevent it. I guess that's the wisdom you learn, but it's mistakes that you and if you try to point, it's like you don't even. It's like it's like I'm a ghost in a sense. Yeah. When I'm around. It's like I'm there, but I'm not there with them. Cause, I know. I have the same problem all the time. You know why? Why bother, people say, why bother telling the police that they're agents for insurance companies and they're stealing from the people? Why bother? Yeah. And I said, because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it fits in reality. It has, it has nothing to do with how comfortable that's going to make me or uncomfortable that's going to make me. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah. And And... If if that means they want to cause me trouble because I've said it, mm. I'll take the trouble. Thank you. You know, if yeah. somebody wants to kill me because of the things I say, I'll I'll take death over shutting up when I see something that's really out of hand. Yeah. And the world is out of hand right now. <laughs> Tell me about it. Everything's in the hands of people who are simply looking to make their life better. Yeah, man, I'm so sick of it. I'm so, like, uh, and Bika telling me, like, she was talking to a friend, and he tried to explain, like, you know, that it was, I guess, basically say that the picture was bigger than that, and the person tried getting you know, confrontational, I guess, for yeah. like, getting the fence. She's like, why well, I can't talk to anybody about anything anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are not that many people left who are prepared to take on the problem when it's this big. Even the people who are aware, like people, yeah. like that I see, like like on a forum that I have, there's people on there, you know, like they know this, but then they still deny it. Like, I I, I don't understand. Maybe maybe. That piggy in the back really is effective, or something, or like they. Think- I, I've been in a, an elevator with mm-hmm. a policeman mm-hmm. uh, in a courthouse, mm-hmm. and I've told the policeman that in fact he was defending the wrong side of the argument, and he said, "I know, Mister Keeley. Everybody knows you're right. <laughs> we know." But yeah. we got children. We got to send them to school. Yeah, we got to. Got to pay the mortgage. <laughs> if they don't. But Excuse me. They don't see the whole big picture because they don't know. Because if they did know, they wouldn't be doing what they. They just. They know. I guess they. They know in that sense. Yeah, you're right. But like, do they realize how? In the end, nobody wins. No. Yeah. I think the cause of the problem. The problem doesn't exist if people stop thinking that way. Because there would be nobody out servicing the needs of the controllers. But because everybody wants to make their life as simple and as easy as possible, the end product Mm -hmm. is everybody's life is worse off. And, you know, I'm not a pacifist. I, I... actually accept the fact that at some time uh, there has to be destruction. Uh, In the same way as when you look at uh, suicide bombers, 
we had suicide bombers in my life mm-hmm. when I was just a baby. Mm-hmm. They were called kamikazes. Mm. And they solved the problem of kamikazes not by trying to catch one at a time, mm. but by going to the kamikaze's hometown and dropping a nuclear bomb on it. <laughs> and And that happened twice. And everybody said, hey, I'm going to stop this. Why are they not doing the same thing on a Uh, valley in Pakistan called, you know, the... Because they run the show down in the Middle East. Because they have a benefit to gain from not doing it. The benefit they gain in the system is creating stress. And they get to control... More people. Yeah. The, the more stressed people are, the more they're willing to give up mm-hmm. whatever it is they have. Yeah, it's like um, uh, one guy who mentioned that he was a supposed uh, truth seeker or whatever. His name was Aaron Russo. And he's like, people make a lot of, like, people like glorify this guy. And um, he said that he was, um, uh, he was, he was, friends with uh, one of the Rockefellers, and Rockefeller told him before 9-11, he's just what he claims. I was like, oh, yes, soon there will be, a, uh, you know, it'll be a great business. It'll be an enemy that they'll, they'll never be able to find. And he didn't know... Soon, he, soon there will be a cleansing uh, of those people. Yeah, and but this guy, Aaron Russo, he died a little while after that of cancer. But he went out in this whole big campaign of income tax and everything. But then I realized, yeah, this guy was, you not, you can't be friends with people like that and just believe them. And, and like he was in a circle, uh, in a, he was in a circle of, of people. He, like, because he made a lot of money too. And um, he made, he directed a movie called uh, Trading Places. And then you got to look at his name, Aaron Russo. Like the, the yeah. Aaron was uh, the high Moses, priest Moses', Moses brother. Yeah, <laughs> and his last name Russo. Oh man, yeah. like that was so. Uh, especially when I started like breaking down names, and I realized that yeah. I was like, "Wow, man!" He's <laughs> people still to this day they still glorify the guy. Yeah, the minute they had a sister mm-hmm. that uh, um, pointed the finger at them. Uh, she died. A little help from their friends. Yeah. So yeah. So the West is instant gratification because we're like we're the the way we are thinking. You know, like it's 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 yet we're free in a sense because we had we had to do that job of going out to outer space, but yet they they the logic of of people in the West is right to uh, left to right type of thing. It's not a, they can see only in the tunnel. They can't see around. Well, it. <laughs> it's because they're like in a canoe in the middle of the ocean <laughs> and they haven't got a clue where they've been. Mm-hmm. And therefore, all they know is where a, they're going to they outside. set a plan to go anywhere. So they just bob around. Yeah waiting for some passing ship and to it, pick them up. Yeah, and, and I remember when you said, uh, there was a post that you put, it's called Word Bound, and it was about like how people just put themselves in boxes with these words. And somebody mentioned, I posted it on a social network, somebody mentioned to me, they said, um, they said, yeah, that's why people don't understand like uh, what they're saying in Buddhism, because Buddhism is like the West, but the total opposite. The non-linear of the West is linear. That's why you can't uh, understand the, the concepts that they're saying. Well, if a bud is is a simple thing to grasp. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, In French, it's called a sion, mm-hmm. which I'm sure is the basis of the word Zion. A sion is basically a cutting. You take a cutting and you graft it on uh, a plant and mm-hmm. it grows into a different plant. 
That's mm. what's happening in our world today. That's what. Oh, that's what Buddhism. Yeah, because it, it it did do that. It sprouted like yeah, unbelievable. Yeah. It came. It was a cutting out of the Brahmins mm. of India. Mm. Not an accident. They're talking about men with bras. <laughs> And and they made a cutting that would be uh, sent out into the world mm. to pacify us. <laughs> love thy neighbor. Love. Thy oh yeah, the love religion. Uh, love everybody. Love. No matter how stupid they are. <laughs> you know. No matter how violent they are. No matter how control freaks they are. And and my point of view is, no, accept everybody as an equal until they show that they're not. But nobody is equal. And even that word, like the word, the la- Yeah, but it's, it's a <laughs> place in the middle where you begin. Yeah, yeah, I guess. And let them show you who they are. You know, people show me this. It's people, right, who are just uh, hypocrites, and they prove it over and over. They'll say one thing and then just contradict themselves. And just that every day, every day, I see some like hypocritical bullshit. That the well, you you don't do. have to look very far in language to point out. I should call hypocrites. them ducks, right? What those type of people, right? Hypocrites <laughs> follow mm-hmm. Hippocratic oaths. And 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 Hippo was a place in North Africa mm-hmm. where the doctors of the Christian Church came from. Mm-hmm. And if you look at a map of the world very carefully, mm-hmm. the uh, uh, southeast southwest corner of France mm-hmm. is shaped like the face of a hippo. Yeah, France. You said. Um, uh, Interesting that place. He said that they were like uh, they work two sides, like they are uh, two faced. Yeah. Oh, Portugal another uh, is, is bisexuals. Person. Another way, another term. Hey. Eh? And they, you, you, you call them bisexual, meaning like Iago. They were like number nine. They were like they just play both sides. I don't call them bisexual. You would have to be a person to be bisexual. Yeah, yeah, but by yeah. Uh, I I call them hypocrites <laughs> yeah. because that's what they tell me they are. Mm-hmm. Not only do they act like hypocrites, mm-hmm. but they have designed their country to create the face of a hippo. <laughs> They've made it the second face on that peninsula at the southwest corner of Europe where Portugal is the first face Spain is the head behind that first face, and then it's followed by France, which has the face of a hippo. So they're telling me that they are two-faced and hypocritical. I was raised in French, and I can guarantee you that's true. (laughs) But I can also guarantee you that there are not too many places in the world that aren't hypocritical. Yeah, they most, are hypocritical. most of them don't go out and prove it every day. Yeah, the, the French, they, uh, they're the ones who watch American shows and then go complain about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and then you have that, but they're supposedly supposed to be like able, and Germany is the, uh, the other side. Because you said they were both Cain, part. Cain and Abel. Yeah. Cain, Cain is the builder. Mm-hmm. And Abel is the, the musician, the the uh, professional, the artist in the background who complains all the time, yeah. but does nothing of any significance except to help the system become worse. Yeah. How, ma- how many people in in the world of acting mm-hmm. uh, are in fact trying to help? the world. No. Whenever the world sets up uh, a scam, mm-hmm. such as as merging uh, 
the different uh, races by creating slavery, mm -hmm. uh, then you get a whole bunch of people within the, the media who run out to adopt children and bring them in their family yeah. uh. and, and pretend they're doing that for the betterment of the child. Yeah, the, you always see them, the actors, oh, yes, we're donating so-and-so money to, to some big scam child. corporation that's going to use it for something else. <laughs> it all has to do with what their agents tell them yeah. they need to do oh. in order to satisfy the needs of the system that pays their salary. So, yeah, that that is. So, number two is number one because look at them. All all of them have private agents that just tell them what to do. Yeah. So, those are the ones with real power. So, people should really be looking at those agents who run the, the show. agents are much more powerful than the cosmetic one out in front. Wow, wow! So like, this, see, Jerd, yeah. you got it in you. <laughs> <laughs> All you need to do is talk it through. Yeah, that's what happens. That that's like that's how I am. Like I gotta talk to people, and then it like comes out. <laughs> so like I like I know it's like it that, that is like a good thing when, when I talk to people, even people who don't. I guess like know what I know, whatever. But I'll ask them questions and they'll say things to me that that's like astounds me, but they don't even realize what they're saying to me. Because that's why I have to, I can't be a hermit because I actually well, learn from talking to people in the world. So. You, don't, you don't learn simply from yourself because mm -hmm. you get hints from yourself and then you got to go out and prove it yeah. to yourself. You don't need to prove it to the world. You need to prove it to yourself that something makes sense or doesn't make sense. Yeah. And to do that, you have to be in touch with other people. Hermits can't do that. So maybe that was probably a control mechanism that uh, Neanderthal was using on their own servants, like the early reformers and stuff. Because I hear... Like people, like those reformers and stuff, they were uh, like the Essenes and stuff like that. These people were hermits and lived in caves. And, and but not. they weren't really hermits. They lived as groups of people. Mm -hmm. And they had basically discussions among themselves. Mm -hmm. A real hermit lives alone. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people are hermits part of their day because... They meditate. Mm -hmm. And when you meditate, you're basically taking on the role of a hermit. Yeah, that word meditate is, is you're just in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not fully there. <laughs> so, I mean, nature made certain that you didn't need to meditate by making sleep a part of your day. <laughs> okay? Go to sleep. Don't need to go meditate <laughs> because the rest of the day, the other two thirds of your day, yeah. you need one for work so mm -hmm. that you can accomplish something, not necessarily work for pay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is uh, letting go a little bit, a little of relaxation. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have much relaxation anymore because they have to drive to work. And your boss doesn't include your travel to work as part of your eight hours you owe to him. So that has to be taken away from your rest and relaxation period that basically allows you to let go of the things that stress you every day and just take it easy. Oh yeah, like a, a, a balance is what's needed: sleep, mm -hmm. rest, and recreation, mm -hmm. and work. Yeah, like for me, I need um, like my job actually ruins. It takes away so much from me because people say, "Oh, like oh, you like to really like do all that stuff, do it after work." But when I when I'm when I get off of work, I don't, I can't concentrate. I'm so tired. I can't. Like I'm better. Like usually, if I want to read something, it's usually better in the, like in the morning, early, because well, it, you know, 
you should always arrange your life so you don't have to spend two hours traveling to work and two hours traveling back from work. And that means that after work, come home, mm-hmm. relax, have a nap, yeah. eat supper, and yeah. then do your reading. Oh, yeah, like me. <laughs> I'm always late to work, Glenn, because I'm just so... And I let it be known, my I, my manager, he kind of hates it. Like my like my job, you can get away with things, but like I'm always coming late to work, and I'll just tell him like oh, I don't want to do this. Like you should be happy to do this. And I look at, I look at him like you kidding me, man? It sucks, man. He's like, no, this is, you're a real man. You he work. <laughs> the philosophy of I guess slavery. You you can work, and you don't have to work for anybody else. Yeah. Have you ever, do you, how do you handle people, right, you talk to, right, that just can't be wrong about anything when you talk to those type of people? Because that's who I have to deal with, like, my manager at work, like, I can't even have a, it, it's gotten so bad, I think, like, I can't even have a really, a, a conversation, really, because it's always. Well, maybe <laughs> you should ask him one day to prove the things, uh, in a manner that you will understand, not just him, because you can't seem to grasp uh, what he means by, you know, work, <laughs> your work is good, you know, that, that type of stuff. Uh, if if that's the case, mm-hmm. would he do it? He loves, yeah, he works like an animal. Yeah, but would he do your job? Yeah, he does my job. He do, Like, what I do, like, everybody, like, he does my job and he does more of it. Like what I do is pretty simple. Like, but he he'll do my his job is basically. It's not like. Like, like would a, he quit what his job is and do your job? Oh no, no, he's not getting paid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But he does the most hours. Like out. Like he does the most hours out of. Because he's on a salary and he does. Uh, uh, like more than because he has to run the store and like the the owner of the store is not there he doesn't do anything he just writes the paychecks and yeah. checks stuff but um he has to run the store sometimes he'll have to be there like from nine till eight sometimes nine from the from close to from more opening to close he has to be there sometimes and he it reminds me of how i used to be when i was a robot I I used to run a a printing operation, electronic printing, Mm -hmm. and it was open 24 hours a day. And and I felt I had to be there 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I would end up being there 14 or 16 hours a day, and that would mean I had no time for anything else. And what I discovered along the way is that's like taking a spring or an elastic band That's and stretching it as far as you can for 16 hours a day and and not letting go. And after a while, if you do that to a spring or, or a, uh, an elastic band, mm-hmm. when you let go, it doesn't go back to its original position. It has atrophied and is unable to move so at, at one stage of the game i said i gotta stop this and yeah because it'll get bad like that reminds me on friday i was talking to one guy a customer came in he's talking about how he has to go to a psychiatrist and we're talking about that whole thing and you don't you don't have uh any benefit from going to a psychiatrist i of course it don't. just adds to your strength yeah. to figure out how you're going to pay him yeah. And he was telling me like the reason why he was going is because because he I, like everybody else they just everybody they all work and people lose their jobs and they like I guess they start to lo- like they start to become they feel they don't feel uh, sane anymore I guess when they don't have their jobs. You know what I did was <laughs> from uh, uh, Friday noon until Monday morning. Uh, until Monday noon, I was out of town. I was by a lake, in the woods, clearing paths, 
making uh, preparations for when I would retire, I would build a, a, um, a community out in, in a, a place, in, it would happen to be in the province of Quebec, close enough to ski hills, close enough to uh, golf courses, that kind of thing, uh, an hour from the city. Uh, I had no interest in golf, and I had no interest in skiing, but I just liked the, the environment of being outdoors. Yeah. So clearing the woods, making paths, People could walk around in uh, building a a cabin, that kind of stuff. That's that's where I got off my habit of being at work, at the business, paying business, and I did it in a manner that I just explained, going out into nature, and that's why I ended up here. Uh, the the only thing I couldn't do in in nature while I was running a business was to have animals because you can't say to the animals, "Sorry, I'm going back to work. <laughs> see, see you next Friday." <laughs> you know? So at the end, when you can retire, then you can add the the element that is animals. And between nature and the animals, that's where you really learn. Learn much more under those conditions where your brain is not being stressed every day, every moment, uh, by having to do things for uh, a reason you probably don't even understand, but somebody set up system that you had to be part of, yeah. whereas when when you're on a farm mm -hmm. and you're making paths through the bush, bringing in firewood, cutting grass and smelling the smells and looking at the leaves and the trees uh, and how they change over seasons, and then watching life and death scenarios that happen every day with uh, when you have animals mm -hmm. goats and pigs and chickens and watching how a, a donkey makes a lot of noise but does nothing <laughs> and gets away with it just like union the only animals I get to watch is squirrels and crows and they, seagulls and they're they're Practically all the same branch of animals. Yeah. You've got to diversify a little bit. I think about those people who don't live in like societies like how we live, and like who don't have a concept of what Monday and Friday is. Every day is just another day. Yeah, they must look at it because <laughs> even how we look at days is, is categorized, and standardized. And, no, it's, it's basically no. addictive, however. Yeah. And when when you're in there and you're doing something that you're being paid to do or whatever, mm -hmm. it's it's addictive. Mm -hmm. And you want it you want to do the best you can in order to succeed for the owners or what whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not the same feeling you get uh, uh, when you're uh, serving breakfast in bed to a bunch of goats, um, <laughs> de delivering water to chickens. <laughs> when you give them the the uh, the chicken feed, you say, "Hey, do, do you enjoy they that?" Don't, they don't even appreciate. It. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it. They take it. They want more. <laughs> uh, but you you uh, you live with that. You you see how it basically gives you all kinds of lessons about how things function in nature yeah. and in the other world that you left behind. Yeah. And then you can sit down for an hour or two and, and talk to somebody from uh, Long Island or California or mm -hmm. uh, 
this afternoon from Slovenia, other times from Scotland, and 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 listen to other people's perspective and exchange yours uh, with theirs and see if there's anything that we should learn. Oh, yeah. So, um, a guy from uh, Brazil said, hello, by the way, I'm going to tell you. He said, yeah, hello. he sent me an email as well. So. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, people who who travel all over the world um, or are born in different places than we are, all have something different to offer. Yeah, I was, yeah. Like, I tell those people, like, some, the people that I know, I tell them, like, do you think, I, I say, do you think it's like a coincidence that the way your life turned out and, you know, the way, the things that you're doing right now, how we're talking right now, more and more every day, I just say, I believe that it's not like a coincidence. It's not a coincidence. It's almost no, it's not a coincidence. It's you had in your spine mm -hmm. a recessive uh, program that needed to be filled with with current data, and without realizing it, you go through your life seeking it out, and eventually you find the the pieces that you can attach. Mm. In, uh, in some religious communities, uh, they talk about soulmates. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it's not much different uh, when part of your life you finds an attachment to uh, another person who thinks uh, about the same things you do, not necessarily thinks like you do, but thinks about the things you think about, mm -hmm. and and to attach yourself to a group of people who are doing that is one of the most fulfilling parts of life. Yes, take it from a guy who's in his 70th year, talking to a guy who's in his, what, 28th year? 26th yeah. 26th year. So uh, the only difference between you and me is I got to hear the story more times. Than you did. <laughs> yeah. and, and attach myself to the pieces that fitted as reality in, in my reason and, and then knew that I was merging my intuitive side with my reasoning side and mm -hmm. becoming better balanced, uh, an equilibrium that I hadn't expected. Mm -hmm. And then I'm shocked by looking at the flag of Korea and seeing that they use it as a sign <laughs> on their flag. Mm -hmm. And that 69 is the equilibrium number. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. It's fun. In any event, mm -hmm. Gerd, Time for you nice to... talking to you. Yeah. Nice talking with you, mm -hmm. at you, <laughs> to me. Yeah. You got to go serve uh, the goat masters tomorrow. <laughs> I got to I gotta go prepare myself for tomorrow. Mm. What time is it anyways? Uh, eight eighteen. Eight, eight eighteen. Yeah. Okay. All right, Glenn. Talk to you again. All right. Goodbye.